This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue on Syria with Bassam Haddad, the director of the Middle East Studies Program at George Mason University, his book, Business Networks in Syria, The Political Economy of Author Authoritarian Resilience, has just been published. Um, welcome to Democracy Now!, uh, Bassam Haddad. The significance of what is taking place and the subtitle of your book about the resilience of authoritarian of an authoritarian regime. How is Bashar al-Assad remaining in power? Who is supporting him? Uh, well, the book is really about the earlier era between 1970 and 2005, where the uh, state actually uh, came together with top business elites to literally hijack the economic policymaking process and create uh, a major part of the cause of what we are seeing today, which is the disenfranchisement of uh, most Syrians as a result of the social polarization that these uh, uh, networks uh, created in society between rich and poor, between between haves and have-nots, and between regions, which is actually how we found out or how we witnessed the uh, uh, revolt proceed from the countryside, from the periphery, as opposed to the center, which has been severely neglected. The Syrian regime has actually uh, survived, you know, based on a combination of uh, strategies, uh, including uh, violence, but not limited to violence. It is just that we are getting to the point where the uh, formula has actually broken down as a result result of this disenfranchisement that uh, uh, most Syrians have actually reached in terms of their uh, ability to make ends meet. And, as well, of course, in the absence of any kinds of avenues for redress, for political redress, for acquiring rights or for defending themselves, uh, the Tunisian uh, revolution sparked the Syrian revolt, perhaps uh, at a point where uh, the Syrian situation was not as ripe as, let's say, Egypt or other uh, places. But uh, I think what we have today is uh, the beginning of the end of the era uh, of the Ba'ath Party rule in Syria. How will it end? How do you see that happening, Professor Haddad? I um, actually I uh, cannot really answer this question with any with any credibility. I don't think anybody can. But if we are to speculate, it does not seem that the Syrian regime is intent or is capable of any genuine compromise, especially after the death toll has reached uh, 4,000 uh, people in Syria. We have uh, a couple of options. I would uh, not actually. Uh, you know, place a lot of emphasis on the Arab League's uh, decision. Uh, on the one hand, it's important uh, that the Arab League has done that, because it is consequential for other players, in the sense that the Arab League's decision is a signal or a prelude to some sort of international intervention, which will be detrimental to all parties involved, including the Syrian people, especially if it takes a military dimension or a military uh, tone. Uh, so, on the one hand, this is uh, uh, it basically, it's still an open game. On the other hand, the regime of the, the violence of the Syrian regime must be condemned uh, with the strongest possible language. One wonders, however, who are the actors that are going to bring about an end. All the actors involved, including the Arab League and the member states, Ultimately, the Arab League is a, uh, is a club of, um, of uh, autocrats and oligarchs that are not actually fit to push for this kind of uh, resolution. They themselves have actually oppressed their own people, and they have now uh, basically uh, shown that there is this desire to uh, end the violence in Syria, but uh, it is not clear how they would actually themselves deal with their, with their own uh, people in the case of uh, revolt. But I do see— uh, uh, some sort of an end in the coming months, if not weeks, that might involve, actually, some sort of economic crisis inside Syria in terms of funding the uh, funding the suppression of the uh, revolution. There will come a point in the next uh, few months, and one hopes much earlier, where this will become an internal debate within the Syrian regime, because it's going to cost ever more to actually continue the suppression. And that might spark some sort of compromise in internally. But uh, besides that, it seems like the Syrian regime is intent on fighting till the end, till death. Can you talk further about the possibility of external intervention and what would it mean for the people of Syria? Uh, 
basically, uh, external intervention can take many forms. Uh, if it does take a military form, it will, as I said, uh, no one uh, will win, and the Syrian people themselves will actually be uh, the biggest losers. Uh, the, uh, the the talk of external intervention and the Arab League's decision, which might be a prelude to external intervention, and the Arab League's decision to speak on behalf of democracy, is uh, in many ways extremely hypocritical. It is almost like it's basically like Israel speaking on behalf of uh, equal rights or the United States speaking on behalf of international law. I do not feel that uh, this kind of approach is uh, is likely to uh, lead to a uh, to a resolution. At the same time, that it's, it seems like a dead end without some sort of uh, external threat, at least. And I think that threat should take uh, forms that are non-military. The economic sanctions that are taking place targeting particular individuals might, as we have been listening and seeing and reading uh, in the cases of Aleppo, there is a slow uh, drain uh, of uh, business people that have been supporting the regime early on, but now they are basically uh, defecting, so to speak, in a very silent manner. I suspect that the defection of uh, the business uh, classes uh, from the regime's ranks is going to continue and increase very rapidly, and it is very difficult to tell when the breaking point will be. But it seems that the uh, best scenario for some sort of—and uh, uh, this is a cold analysis, of course—but the best scenario for some sort of conclusion here would have to be uh, a serious economic pressure that will cause or force the regime to uh, reevaluate its priorities. And what do you think the U.N. should do in the U.S.? The United States uh, and the UN uh, are, I mean, they're different things, or they, they should be different things. But uh, I feel that the most that international, uh, the international environment or the international community, so to speak, because I, I you know, have an issue with the international community uh, question, but uh, they must continue to apply diplomatic pressures, economic pressures, and sanctions. And if anything, if there is any sort of uh, idea of deployment, uh, of uh, peacekeeping forces, I think any non-Arab peacekeeping forces or any non-Arab uh, military intervention uh, of any sort uh, will actually exacerbate the situation to the detriment of the Syrian people. Uh, I wanted to ask you, as a director of the Middle East Studies Program in general at George Mason, about the increasing tension with Iran, the reports that 17 members of the Iranian uh, Revolution Guard died Saturday in a massive explosion at an ammunition depot west of Tehran, the dead including General Hassan Mogadam, a key figure in Iran's missile program, uh, the explosion destroying the base which housed Iran's stockpile of Shahab missiles, a missile capable of reaching Israel. Uh, Time magazine is quoting an unnamed Western intelligence uh, source saying the Israeli spy agency Mossad carried out the attack. Uh, we do not know exactly, uh, you know, the details or uh, what happened in uh, in Iran, but in relation to our discussion, the uh, uh, the situation in Iran is going to perhaps affect what is going on in Syria in indirect ways. We have seen in the past uh, week or so threats uh, coming from Israel regarding Iran's uh, alleged nuclear weapon building. And it seems that this situation, as it uh, percolates, might lead to some sort to might flare up into something that is unanticipated, something of a perhaps a small skirmish or confrontation uh, and a response from Israel that might actually spin the entire situation out of control, which actually ultimately will end up supporting the Syrian regime, because it will uh, detract attention from, what, from what's happening in Syria and create the kind of regional uh, mayhem that actually we're trying to avoid by talking about, uh, uh, or by myself in this case, uh, discussing the perils of international intervention. Uh, but besides that, I, I will not speculate much more about this incident. It's too early. Bassam Haddad, I want to thank you for being with us, director of the Middle East Studies Program at George Mason University. His book is just out, called Business Networks in Syria, The Political Economy of Authoritarian Resilience.